Hey, Chris here, coming to you from uh, Airbnb in a little town in Columbia. And I was just reading the book You Squared by Price Pritchett. It's a book that my business coach has had me read, read every week for an entire year. And I was reading the section about limitations, about how we have limitations. We have natural limitations, but they are a lot less limiting than we tend to think, right? We tend to perceive our limitations to be a lot greater than they actually are. And I was thinking about that, and you know, I sincerely believe that our dreams and our desires that exist in our soul exist because God put them there, because God wanted to, they, they exist to direct us as to what we are supposed to do in life, right? But the problem is that we tend to confuse the, the desires with the means of getting there. So the classic example, right, is uh, somebody who's short who wants to be a basketball player. If you're if you're five foot six, probably you're not going to be able to play in the NBA, no matter how how much you want it. But the point is that I don't think that being a basketball player is really the dream. That's not really the goal. You can dig deeper into that and figure out what the actual dream, what the actual goal, what the actual desires are, because that's not the goal itself. It's just a means of getting there. So in that example, uh, the the guy who wants to be a basketball player, he could ask himself, okay, why do I want to be a basketball player? What is it that I want to get out of being a basketball player, right? Um, so maybe, uh, maybe you love playing basketball and you want to play basketball all the time, okay? And uh, maybe you want to get rich, right? There's probably a combination of reasons that being a pro basketball player seems to be a good fit for. So you want to play basketball, you want to be rich, um, maybe you want to travel a lot, right? A pro basketball player is somebody who plays basketball all the time, has a lot of money, and travels a lot. So it seems like a good fit, right? But that doesn't mean it's the only fit. So, um, you know, and I would I would say you should even dig deeper into those desires, right? So uh, playing basketball is pretty self-explanatory. You play basketball because you love to play basketball. Okay. Um, you want to make money. Well, why do you want to make money? Maybe you want luxury. Maybe you want to be more attractive to girls. Maybe you want to prove to yourself to someone who doubted you in the past, right? Um, and, you know, I would, I would say that if you want to prove yourself to someone and that's your motivation, well, you're going to be a lot more successful if you get rid of that motivation. If you stop trying to prove yourself, you're going to be, you're going to be uh, more likely to actually prove yourself. But that's another matter. Anyway, so maybe, uh, maybe you just want a feeling of accomplishment. Maybe, you, maybe your family was always poor and you want to show them a nicer life. Maybe you have, there's a cause that you want to support, etc., etc. There's a million reasons for that. Figure out what they are, right? And then same thing, why do you want to travel? You want new experiences? You want to just you want to meet people around the world, etc. Figure out what it is you want on the most basic level. And sometimes you can go multiple levels into that. So you want to feel a feeling of accomplishment, for example. Why do you want to feel a feeling of accomplishment? Maybe uh, you want to... Uh, you want to feel loved. I don't know. You know, whatever it is for you. Go all the way down deep into that, and then once you understand, you you're this is an exercise in understanding who you are and what you really desire out of life. And once you understand that, then the other alternatives start presenting themselves to you. So, for example, um, you want to you want to make money, you want to travel, and you want to play basketball a lot. Well, being a pro basketball player is not the only way to do that. For example, you could be an entrepreneur. You could make a passive income on the internet, like I'm doing, and then you have money. You have all the free time in the world where that you could spend playing basketball as much as you want, and you can travel as much as you want, right? So you're still you're still fulfilling all of your desires. You're just going back going about it a different way. And the only reason uh, that you were ever so attached to the idea of being a pro basketball player is because you just didn't you, you didn't think of it in terms of what you actually wanted out of life you weren't really aware of your own dreams and your own desires so another limitation a lot of people think they have is that they're not intelligent enough like maybe they want to be an entrepreneur but they think oh well I'm not a genius I'm not Bill Gates I'm not Elon Musk etc and I would say that that's really not that much of a limitation in fact, it might be an advantage, depending on what you're doing. You know, you don't have to be a super genius to to be an entrepreneur. And in fact, the 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 little pieces that you maybe you do have to have above average intelligence to do. Maybe uh, 
programming an app or creating a web page or doing some sort of technical stuff, you know? The people who do that for a living don't make that much money. I mean, they make okay money, but uh, the, the, the most intelligent people in the world tend to be stuck in the middle class. And this is a something I go into in great lengths in, in uh, my, the special report I did with my with my business partner called The 11 Mistakes That Middle Class People Make That Keep Them From Becoming Rich, right? People who are in highly, highly intelligent tend to rely on their intelligence and sell their intelligence, like time for money, essentially, at a higher rate than somebody who's not intelligent, but still, they're just selling their intelligence. And you could hire them, right? They don't charge that much. Most of, I mean, hardly any of them make above two or three hundred thousand dollars a year. Right? Or a, few, or a few hundred dollars an hour. So you could pay them to do that little bit of work for them, for you. Or, I mean, even if you don't have the money to pay them, you could just, you know, the, these people don't really have a lot of entrepreneurial talent most of the time. So you could cut them in on the deal, give them a little bit of equity, right? And then they do it for cheap. So intelligence really is, uh, is not that big a limitation. And in fact, the fact if you are of like more normal intelligence well that puts you on the same level as the vast majority of people in the world so you will relate to them a lot better than some weird nerdy super genius who is you know coding your website for you right so um so the fact is that that uh your perceived limitations if you really think about it probably are not that limiting at all um, so that's it for today. I just wanted to uh, tell you, well, give you a few a few things to think about. One is to know what you want. <coughs> know what you want on a fundamental level. Don't confuse the what you actually want with the means of getting there. And two is don't make your limitations out to be greater than they are. You know, people have a tendency to negativity, and so we assume that our, our limitations are a lot greater than they are, but they aren't. So think about that. Think about how to apply that in your own life. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, if you appreciated this, if this was helpful for you, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and share it with somebody who you think would also find it helpful. And uh, if you want to check out the, the 11 mistakes that middle class people make that keep them from becoming rich, I will put that in the description. So I will see you guys later. You have an awesome day.